Hello and welcome to On Point. I'm Matt Vanderveer. Today we'll be talking about the future of journalism. The combination of new technologies and a struggling economy seem to have put traditional journalism on life support. Here to talk about this and more is Editor-in-Chief of the Daily Sundial, Yasmin Cruz. Yasmin also writes for the Sundial and blogs for bargainbabe.com. Next we have Professor of Journalism, Jessica Retis. Jessica teaches a course here at CSUN in New Media. Her most recent published work is a comparative analysis of ethnic media in global cities. And last but not least, we have retired CBS correspondent David Dow. David also teaches at USC's Annenberg School of Communication. All right, guys, let's get one thing figured out. What is a journalist? You know, many people say, what's the difference between a journalist and someone who simply pours their heart out onto the computer can be a bit hard to decipher. So what is a journalist? We could do a whole program on that. Uh, you know, it's, it's the same difficulty as defining what is news. And uh, we work in the only profession where there, there is no uh, ironclad, sharply etched definition of what we do. And uh, there is, a, a, as you know, a big debate going on right now as to what a journalist is. Is it anybody who happens to uh, uh, tweet a, uh, an account of some event that he, ha he or she just happens to, to observe? Or uh, are there some kinds of uh, credentials that are required for this? In fact, journalists have always resisted credentialing, per se, uh, a, a degree or a license uh, as an interference of the First Amendment. So it's a, something we're struggling with. I tend to think that uh, a journalist, in my mind, is somebody who uh, spends most of his or her uh, vocational life doing it, and uh, probably someone who gets paid for doing it. And I wonder, Jessica, what you think. Yeah, I would go to what was a journalism and what is going to be a journalism in the future, or what is the transition that we're going. Um, because 20 years ago, when I was a journalist, I was just writing stories, and normally a photographer uh, usually came with me, and we have like divided um, issues. But right now, um, any journalist should be able to write a story, take the pictures, shoot a video, or uh, grab some audio. So it's turning into a multimedia skills. And you have to be multi-talented, multi but also you have to find some time to, to do research and to go for the information. So it's, I would say it's a challenge now for uh, the newcomers, journalists. So we are we're preparing you. Uh, to um, to a different world, uh, it's more complicated, it's more complex, and the industry is shrinking too. So you must be multi-skilled and really able to understand different areas of the society. So uh, I would say that nowadays uh, the discussion about uh, if we're turning a new model of journalism is uh, it's an interesting debate. And let's turn to the resident newspaper person here. What do you think constitutes a journalist? Well, a journalist is a person that is trained, but then now we've seen that journalism has, is been, it's in a transition. So we do have bloggers. Um, many people consider them to be journalists. In my opinion, they are not. It's like having pundits on TV. They are not journalists. They are just spilling out their opinions. So it's pretty much the same as blogging. You're just doing it in a different format, and you're doing the writing. All right. Uh, David, you know, viewership of network news has been declining over the years. Uh, we're now seeing people, networks using Skype instead of camera crews, and, you know, for a long time now we've been laying people off. Do you think there's an end to this downsizing, or will network news eventually disappear? Well, I think network news is faced with what everybody else in the field is uh, faced with, or in the traditional field of journalism is faced with and that is reinventing itself to some extent and I think you're seeing some of that on the air. Uh, I, as, as a, uh, an old traditionalist, a relic of uh, quote the good old days, uh, I cringe every time I see a Skype interview on the air. Uh, I just feel like it's a downgrading of quality and, and uh, an earmark of the kind of economies that you're talking about. But I think um, there are two possibilities that the traditional uh, network newscasts get reinvented in some way that makes that draws back viewers or merger and I think you're, you're hearing more talk of that than the other uh, there have been there's been talk for for years now of uh, uh, some kind of uh, out and out merger between CBS and CNN 
and uh, we're, we're going to see, I think, a different look for network news and a different arrangement of network news probably in five years than we see now. And I, uh, I want to talk about ethnic media a little bit, Jessica. Mm -hmm. um, I know you did a study that focused a lot on that. So mm -hmm. why and how is ethnic media produced? Yeah, well, I, I have to make a correction with the previous presentation because my recent published book is about mapping ethnic media in Madrid. And I, this, the, the other one is an ongoing uh, process. So I'm doing that, that research because I was interested in comparing what is happening with ethnic media in three different global cities, uh, Madrid, Los Angeles, and London, and especially within Latino communities and Latino media. And if we're talking about the future of journalism, I would say that uh, the state of the media right now in these cities, it's uh, demonstrating that ethnic media is not dying, uh, but it's growing in because of the population flows from different cities to these cities. So it's, it's interesting, and I would say uh, more job opportunities are going to grow in, uh, in ethnic media in these kind of cities. So. Uh, I would say the future of the journalism in this sense would be bilingual or multilingual and multimedia. Well, I want to touch on your study uh, specifically for just, a, for just a minute. I know you said it focused on Madrid, London, and Los Angeles. Uh -huh. um, what, what's a specific, probably the most distinct um, finding that you discovered between European journalists and American mm -hmm. journalists? Well, that's a, that's a uh, an interesting one. Uh, I would say that if we're talking about, for example, London and uh, Los Angeles, um, there is uh, the, 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 this obviously diversity regarding the communities and its diversity uh, regarding the media and the production of the media. Uh, about Latinos, uh, Latino communities, I would say that in Los Angeles is uh, it's growing and it's already set and it's uh, um, it's a growing market, but it's also a growing alternative media that we that we're finding right now. So it's alternative ethnic uh, community media also, which is interesting because it's different ways of producing and delivering information, and the content is also different. Uh, if we go back to London, uh, there's a, a, a long history in receiving immigrants, so there's a more uh, there's a more diverse uh, tradition of um, ethnic media. If we're comparing London with Madrid, because Madrid is um, is recently new, we've been receiving in Madrid immigrants for only the last uh, couple of decades. So, and basically, uh, the most important ones are coming from Latin America. So in this sense, regarding Latino communities, Madrid is turning more like Los Angeles. And uh, London, it's, uh, it's receiving a lot of population uh, from Latin America, but specific, specifically from uh, Colombia and Chile. It's not that uh, that much, but it's trying to to grow. And because the population flows goes in like in circles, there is people moving from Colombia, but with the second project of immigration. Uh, in in other words, people that they move from Colombia to Madrid, and that they are moving from Madrid to uh, London, because it's a more uh, open um, labor market right now. So because that is happening, the production of Latino media also is growing. And, but regarding ethnic media, I would say it is more Asian media that is uh, being produced. And for example, the BBC is open, is opening, uh, they are opening some, some spaces for different languages and different uh, communities. And that would say it's different from uh, Los Angeles, because we're still working in opening the doors for different ethnicities. Okay.